We're joined by Republican Congressman Matt Rosendale of Montana. Thank you so much, Congressman, for joining us. You voted today to remove McCarthy as Speaker. The first time, of course, that's happened in the history of Congress. What drove your decision? You know, it's unfortunate that we've come to this point, but broken trust is, is really what I will say is the main reason. Uh, we started off in January, a tumultuous election. Uh, there were some agreements that were made to basically restore regular order to Congress so that we could function again as the body was intended, so each one of the members could represent their constituents equally. And there were some agreements made to restore the rules so that we had single subject legislation so that we were going to deliver the uh, appropriation bills over the uh, time period that they were supposed to be, which was June 30th. We were going to do all of these things. And Unfortunately, what we saw was that uh, Speaker McCarthy wasn't willing to do those things, and he broke uh, many of those promises. When we see that the debt ceiling transaction had more support from Democrats than it did Republicans, after the Republicans had negotiated and put forward a debt ceiling package and, and had 218 Republicans support that, that was, that was broken trust. He negotiated that outside of the conference. He went forward and passed a continuing resolution to extend the Nancy Pelosi's spending and Joe Biden's policies and had 209 uh, Democrats support that. But the, really the, the final straw was to negotiate a separate deal with President Biden to send additional aid to Ukraine uh, and try and tie that to our own border security. And so finally, uh, we, we've made the decision to remove him. I will tell you, it's interesting. You, you go to the floor and I have conversations uh, with a lot of my colleagues, but I will tell you that I'm, I'm basically tired of being lectured to by people that had been here for several decades about plunging us into chaos and uncertainty. And they are the same ones that have accumulated a $33 trillion dollar debt for our country. I think we need to start doing some things differently. And so you just quoted, uh, I believe it was Republican Representative Tom Cole, who said, think long and hard before you plunge us into chaos. That didn't move you at all, it sounds like. You weren't concerned about what this now could mean, potentially opening a new can of worms. I don't think that we're going to be plunged into chaos and uncertainty. I think we have Patrick McHenry, who's going to be the Speaker pro tem. There's absolutely no reason that the committees cannot continue their work, but I can tell you what is plunging us into chaos and uncertainty, and that's mounting an additional $3 trillion a year onto our national debt, which is already sitting at $33 trillion. In five short years, that will put us at 50% of the revenue that gets collected by the federal government being consumed just to pay the interest, just to pay the interest. And, and if that takes place, if you think we have difficult decisions now to make about what we're going to do in spending, they will be monumental in five short years. You were one of four House Republicans who voted present instead of supporting McCarthy when he was elected speaker back in January. So, of course, you've never really been a supporter, but did you expect him to, to only last this long as speaker? Was this day inevitable in your mind? I had grave reservations uh, when he was elected as speaker, but I can tell you, if you look at the work that I've done since then, I worked with the 218 Republicans to pass the Limit, Save, and Grow debt ceiling package. I worked with the Republicans in the House to pass the uh, HR2, which was the with historic uh, legislation to provide border security and, and uh, take care of immigration. I worked with the Republicans to pass H.R. 1, which was our domestic energy production legislation. Uh, we all worked very hard for these things. And the only time that we saw them come unraveled and be voted against is when Kevin McCarthy went and acquired, acquired transactions with Democrats without the Republican conference. It, let's move beyond the idea of, of Kevin McCarthy for a moment, because we should note that more than 200 Republicans still backed him. Is there any overall concern for you on your part that so few Republican members can oust a House Speaker? Do you think that that process should apply for the next Speaker? That, that was the motion to vote, vacate, which has been in place for, it's my understanding, well over 100 years. Nancy Pelosi had it removed because she was very concerned that several of her members were going to remove her. And so they went along with the uh, change in that rule. And basically, again, this is just a restoration of a, a rule that's been in place for, for many, many, many years. Uh, I do believe that the most important trait that we find in the next speaker is trustworthiness. And we have lacked that sorely. 
when we see the transactions that took place, again, the trust was violated on the debt ceiling package. The trust was violated on the continuing resolution. Uh, we did not have the appropriation bills brought forward by the June 30 deadline. They weren't here by July 30. They weren't here by August 30th. And this is what has put us to the situation where we're tr funding government again continuously by continuing resolutions and omnibus bills, which is prohibited by law and it's, uh, it's hated by the American people. And looking forward, any, any names that you'd throw out there as people you might support for the next speaker? There is so much talent up here, I assure you, that in short order, we will find someone who has the ability to lead this team to success, which is going to be success for the American people. I will tell you that. And the number one trait that I'm looking for is someone who's trustworthy. And just a yes or no here, do you think that had Kevin McCarthy not actually made the deal uh, to avert the government shutdown, you think he'd still have his job right now? I think that when we have a speaker for the Republican Party that acquires 209 Democrat votes to get his work done, that there's a major problem. Congressman Matt Rosendale, we so appreciate your time. Really, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.